Bam! That made an impression, and you can make an impression too for yourself, for your business, for your organization. Lots of different tricks on how to do it. Easy. They don't cost a lot of money. We're going to find out more about that on this week's episode of the State of Greater Western New York Report, which, as always, is brought to you each by... Week, our community makes history. Each week, you make history. And each week, there's only one source to turn to for the first take on history. You know what that is? Subscribe to The Sentinel right now to discover the history being made in your own backyard. The Linden Honey Lake Falls Lima Sentinel. More than just your news, it's your history. Welcome everyone to this edition of the State of Greater Western New York Report. Join us each episode as we discuss fantastic topics ranging from history to science to the strange and the wonderful, as well as the treasured spirit with which our region has infused America. We challenge you to consider all things Greater Western New York, from our region's very beginnings to how it inspires, how it empowers, and why it is so admired. Here's the host of the State of Greater Western New York Report, Chris Carosa. Hi there, everybody, and welcome to today's show. We've got a great guest who's going to tell us all these interesting things that are applicable to almost anything you do. He doesn't know that, but it uh, it's true. Uh, maybe he does know that. Ryan, Ryan McCormick, he's a PR professional uh, from, from... Well, let, Ryan, why don't you tell us about your firm and who you are? We don't need to sure. replay that, uh, but... Uh, yeah, there we go. Go ahead, Ryan. Tell us yep. a little bit of how you ended up getting where you are today. Well, there's a funny story behind it, Chris. My name is Ryan McCormick. I am media relations specialist and co-founder of Golden McCormick PR, goldenmccormick.com. And I, our company is going to celebrate our 13-year anniversary this week. And my experience in the PR is a quick story. I was a media production major at Florida State University and I was making a film, and I was really good at getting the word out about the film. I would have people come from TV and radio cover the film. The problem is that the film was just absolutely, production values weren't that good. And my friend the night of the premiere said, you know, you're so much better at doing PR for the film than you were actually making the film. I was like, you know, that's a great idea. And that's when the uh, vision for PR was born, and it's been that way ever since. Well, tell me more about how it how it was when you started when you started your firm. What was it like? Were, were you working with another firm and then you moved forward, or did you just start from scratch? And did you have any mentors who helped you along the way? Sure, I was working and for PR for Comic Strip Live Comedy Club in New York City, which is a legendary club where Jerry Seinfeld had his start, and I was bringing comedians to Court TV on Sirius XM and their executive producer there was a gentleman named Mark Goldman and we just got along really well. And I, I saw something in Mark, I just knew that he was really sharp and I think he'd be excellent at PR, it was very much um, intuition. So I, long story short, Court TV winds up folding and Mark and I are working for an agency in Cold Spring Harbor, Long Island, New York. And we were working there for a while. We had our own philosophies. In the course of that period of time, I had worked for another PR agency and done other PR work. But Mark and I shared a distinct vision for what we wanted to do for our clients, which is to provide um, exceptional value. We just always believe in PR that you want to provide as much value, as much service as possible, and just do things differently. So it was that vision. The fact that we were former members of the media, the fact that we understood how the media was there, it's very helpful. And in the course of that period of time, Mark and I have both taken on mentors. We both learn from other people. We're, we're actually, we both are instinctively curious. One of my PR mentors was Michael Levine, who represented 58 um, Emmy Award winners. So he's known as a legendary uh, PR uh, publicist in Hollywood. And he was a person who I've been learning from since I was 22 years old. And I would ask him questions. And I actually recommend to your uh, viewers out there when you're in a field and you're in a profession and you want to learn more about it, do whatever you can to try to identify uh, two or three people within that industry that you can make a connection with, that you can talk with. I mean, it's incredible that so many people, I think they'll be inclined to want to talk to you because so many people reach out to other people these days. It's kind of like they're just looking for a job, but they're not looking to, to learn, to learn a skill or looking to, to work with a teacher. So in our experience, my experience, Mark and I's experience, 
we found a number of wonderful teachers. And to this day, not only do the teachers start out as you know helping us in the beginning, but we want to uh, do, doing PR for them as well. And we're, we're standing side by side with them. That's certainly great advice for everybody, no matter what field you're Thank in. You. Tell us a little bit about who you work with today to give to give our, our listeners a sense of, of when you talk about the advice you're about to talk about, how it might apply to them. So so how how are your clients today perhaps similar to the typical small business owner who might be watching this show? Sure. Well, we work with a lot of solo practitioners. We've worked with plenty of doctors, lawyers, authors, small business owners. A lot of individuals want to get or magnify their message and they want to increase their public visibility. And there are a number of different ways to do that. Well, I'll be happy to share that with you today. But when you are in a small business, it's so crucial that if you can get some very positive press and you can be seen more and more as an established expert in your field, you can have a very profound positive impact on how people perceive you and how the world perceives you. So along those lines, what is the one thing that people typically don't do that they could do that's really easy that would help them build awareness in their business? Well, the first thing that they do, I think that uh, there are a lot of people that are very humble, but they don't toot their own horn. They don't uh, have someone out there talking about what they're doing. And if you don't let people know what you are doing, and you don't let people know why you should be uh, seen by more people. And by, by, it's, it's one of the, the it's a setback. So I, I would say that if you are an expert and you have a lot of value that you can bring and you can help other individuals, let people know about it. Let people know about what you are doing and let people know that uh, you can provide a lot of value because once the word gets out and you provide a high quality product or service, word of mouth will get out. And with effective public relations, Chris, that should enhance your efforts. So what are some of the things that they could be doing to get the word out? Do they send uh, press releases? Do they put everything on Twitter or Facebook? Or what, what are this, what's the best disciplined way, I should say, to get the message out? Well, Probably one of the best disciplined way is to understand that you are the message, that you are your own brand. So the way you dress, the way you present yourself is a direct reflection on the business that you operate. So if you're always conducting yourself with high integrity everywhere you go, that is going to have a direct impact on how people relate and deal with you and engage with you. But some of the things you can do right away is if you're starting to work with the media, Put out a press release that's timely, have information that is just timely, not just a press release about how great you are. When you're working with an effective public relations agency, they'll be able to present the information out there so it's news that's valid, that news, it's news people can use. So always think about when you're engaging with the media and you're engaging with the public, how much value you can bring, how many ways can you help other people, what is unique about you, what are some of the unique selling propositions. So we work with plenty of doctors, attorneys, and uh, other individuals. And they're putting those out there. And because they're putting those out there, they're getting their public visibility raised. Uh, some of the things you can do is to develop a newsletter you, that you'll send out to clients and prospective customers. And in that newsletter, present information that's empowering, present updates in your company and talk about some of the wonderful things that you're doing. Maybe list some of your recent media appearances. Maybe that before be we really before we explore the newsletter aspect of things, let's go back to the press release because there was something that you told me earlier that I thought was interesting, and that was your business, uh, not yeah, your say anybody's business is going to be in a certain sphere, and there may be a timely news story that really isn't directly related to the business, but it can be made to to be related to the business. It, I guess it's called newsjacking. Can you tell us a little bit about what that concept is and maybe give us a practical example of how that works? Absolutely. So say for example, there is a story that breaks where a celebrity is seen uh, not having the best manners in public and you happen to be an etiquette expert. Well, you'd want to present and contact me and say, hey, by the way, I'm an etiquette expert. 
here are some of the things that that celebrity should be doing. Or you are a person with a legal background, legal expertise, and a certain news story breaks, and you can offer your legal analysis on that. So if you are out there and you are thinking about your business, and you're thinking about your expertise, always think about certain stories that you can comment on because the media always looks for experts. And if you are engaging, if you are providing terrific information, the media will have you on again. And again, they'll put you on a platform where you'll either be seen or heard by a lot of individuals. And by plugging your website, that should drive traffic, that should drive people to you. So think about that. Think about anytime there's a breaking news story, if you have the expertise that can apply, that you can add something on that you can contribute to that conversation. You, know, you made me think of something else. That was a business example. Do you have examples, say, in the nonprofit world or, or volunteer organizations, groups that not really are businesses, but but need the same sort of brand awareness building that businesses do? Of course. Well, one of the things that we're really passionate about, Chris, is we're very passionate about nonprofits, especially as they pertain to animal rights and animal rescue. And if you're operating a nonprofit, let's say for uh, animal rescue, one thing you can do is you can provide tips and advice on how people can adopt uh, one of the best processes for uh, rescuing animals. You know, everyone out there that is in a nonprofit, you, you have expertise, you have a lot of knowledge that the world would wanna know about. So anything that you apply to your own nonprofit that's working, that's effective, that someone can take and use it to help themselves, that is knowledge and information that should be in the media. So as far as nonprofits go, one of the uh, best things you can do, from my perspective, our perspective is, you know, give an award to someone, do an award ceremony, do a uh, fundraiser where you honor certain members of the media. Mark, um, Carter, Mark and I, we came up with this concept years ago called New York's Funniest Reporter Show. And what we, we did, it, we did it for about because of 12 or 13 years where we had members of the media, they would come on stage, they would do five minutes of stand-up comedy, and it was a fundraiser for the Main Society of New York. And with that being said, we had uh, TV producers, radio producers, we had some pretty big name uh, media personalities, national personalities that came. And the event was very well received and was well known because of the amount of media that came. So I would say for you out there that are in nonprofits, think about all the different ways that you can provide value to other people. Again, I'm, I'm, and I'm just coming back to the same one before about business, but it's it's really true. If you it's if you put a lot of positive energy out and you provide a lot of value out and you're offering a lot of things you can do to help people, it's just a good circle of energy that, that tends to come back to you. I don't think there's anything wrong with it at all that you're always gonna lead to something good by helping others, by putting initiative to provide value to others. I think this is an important point that you make that a lot of times, You'll, you'll see classes or webinars or, or some sort of training that pertain to one particular field, say business, but that same training, exactly the same, could be applied to a nonprofit. Likewise, different fields. You, 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 you mentioned like a, uh, what a lawyer might do, what a lawyer might be interested in, in terms of PR. Well, that would apply to other types of businesses too, not just legal businesses. So it's important to kind of connect the dots that way, and you can see how you can apply what, you, what you're going to learn in other areas. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, let's talk more about newsletters and also what happens when things don't go quite right. We'll be right back. Through the mists of time, nature and man have both created and buried treasures beyond the imagination. With the ages, these riches slowly dissolve into mere myths until they are forever forgotten. But there are those brave souls who tirelessly cling to the truth, ever seeking to discover the undiscovered, to reveal what has always been there, to uncover the hidden gems of a land thought forsaken, but loved by millions.
50 Hidden Gems of Greater Western New York. Discover the secrets in your own backyard. Buy your copy now at 50hiddengems.com. Welcome back. You're watching the State of Greater Western New York Report. I'm Chris Grossi, your host, and with us today is Ryan McCormick of Gorman McCormick Public Relations. Now, Ryan, you mentioned newsletters, and newsletters are always something that maybe seem a bit of a burden for many people for, for a couple of reasons. One, the content, creating the content, but then secondly, the publication schedule. So can you tell us a little bit about each of those things? How do you create the content that's easy, that'll make it easy for you? And how often should you actually publish your newsletter? Okay, before I go into the newsletter, I just want to say, Chris, that I love that commercial for your book. That was absolutely fascinating. That was, in, that was a really engaging commercial. Uh, so I, I have to uh, commend you for it. I'm very excited about your book, about what's the, the Hidden Gems of Western New York. So I'd say that on the PR front, you're doing a great job there. Coming back to newsletters, I would say that for your newsletter, you'd want to do maybe once a month. Uh, no one likes getting emails on a regular basis, like too many emails. And understand this, that when you're presenting a newsletter, you, you're you communicating with people that you already have a relationship with. And when you're there, I would keep it brief and keep the information something that's, that's all about them. So, okay, open a newsletter, give them some updates about what your company's done. Did you hire someone new? Have you expanded your offices? Are you offering a new service? Terrific, let people know about that. But then also provide some tips, some tips that could directly impact their life. You know, our PR firm, Chris, we were seeing a lot of people do these things around the holidays and the years where they would say, oh, happy holidays from this company and happy New Year's Eve. And it was just an, an email of just letting people know that you wish them a happy holidays. I'm like, okay, well, that's nice. So we did something completely different. We said, okay, for our newsletter that we're going to do, we're going to list five or six different things that you can do this year that will empower you, that will take you to the next level. And can I give you some of those tips that we put into our newsletter? Sure. Okay. For those of you out there uh, that want to raise your profile, one of the first things I recommend doing is one, make sure you have a website. You can get them through WordPress, you can get them through Wix or a number of different things you can do. As long as you have a website, that is great because that's where people can come see you. Second thing is to start writing. Do have like have 10 or 12 different blog entries if you can. Always providing your expertise, write as often as you can. My father used to always tell me, he tells me this day to write more and getting your ideas out there, especially if they're timeless, that's going to be very good because it's going to build rapport. It's going to build a history of your expertise. Another thing you could start doing is to create your own podcast. And with our firm, we produce custom podcasts from top to bottom. But if you build a podcast, you learn to engage an audience, you'll be able to really refine your media training skills. So when you finally decide to do PR, you'll be ahead of the curve. You'll already have a report speaking with the audience. And if you build your podcast and you build your audience, you become a media entity onto your own. It'll be, it'll be absolutely terrific. Also, always think about uh, a book that you might be able to write or think about um, all the ways that you can um, help the community and bring value to the community as well. So in our newsletter, we said, okay, you know, happy New Year's, but these are the things you need to do. We gave our, our, our customers, our clients, a homework assignment. So that was what we did. And I think it stood out because we did some really great responses. You know, it's funny you mentioned writing. I, my son was just going through my old materials. When I say old, I mean high school and early college. And he was incredulous that I would write these things down. These aren't assignments. These are almost like notes to myself. I would keep a log of what I was doing or what I wanted to do. And he asked me, why, why would you do that? Why would you waste time writing it down? Just remember it. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, when you build up enough experience, you, you don't remember things. And these are little, little tidbits of breadcrumbs to remind you of what you wanted to do. So writing something down for your business, even if it's obvious to you, a short entry, 300 words or so about what you do in your business, it's easy for you to do, but 10 to one, somebody who isn't in your business and reads what you just wrote will say, hey, that person really knows what they're doing. So I agree with you, uh, Ryan. I think writing it down is, is important. We had a question here. The question was, who do I send the newsletter to? But I think a better question is, how do you build that, that email list of, of where you send that letter. It's, is there a, is it a long 
process or is there is there shortcuts to and i'm not talking about buying emails i'm actually talking about you know solid email yeah, how, do you, how do you go yeah. about build that go ahead sure one of the best ways to do it is to have a contact form on your website where people can sign up right away that'd be one of the quickest ways to do that if you're on facebook have a facebook group communicate with your friend, family friends on facebook you can also ask people if they're willing to join as well. So Facebook is a good way to do it because you can comment on a number of groups and asking them if they'll want to sign up. But you can really increase your newsletter list by starting a podcast because you're actively presenting content on a consistent basis that engages a certain number of individuals. And as your podcast grows, you'll watch your mailing list grow as well. But I would say putting it on your website, putting it on Facebook and putting it on social media and giving people a reason why they should sign up because most people you know individuals, they don't want to have another email that comes in they want to know that if you're going to if they're going to join for your list that they're going to be getting something out of it that they, you're going to be providing um, a lot of uh, great content for them let's let's go to the other side of the spectrum and that is when you make a mistake on on social media uh, or crisis. something like that. crisis management you're right not so much hollywood scandal level but something that could hurt your business or, or hurt your organization in some way. Uh, what are the ways to reduce the likelihood that you're gonna make a mistake like that? Well, first off, I highly recommend to CEOs and small business owners to, to use social media as little as possible. And don't use social media when you are angry or, or when you are in an, an emotional state because you tend to, to not be thinking logically or rationally. There are individuals and CEOs that like to put out their political perspectives or their, or their social perspectives out. And quite frankly, I think that is counterproductive because once someone perceives you or makes a judgment on you based on your political or uh, social perspective, then they are judging that and they are not looking or judging you based on the service or product that you provide and you feel it's completely unnecessary so when you are in business and you are trying to you want to reach the maximum amount of people out there you want to provide and service them the, the, the max amount of people so I highly recommend do not do that and if you are to engage on social media i would not put your political perspectives out i mean i, I actually have a tendency to to butt heads with other publicists about that because they, they feel that they, they, they should be proactive and they should be ahead of the curve or they should be putting their information out. I just don't think anything good comes about it. Okay, so you if you put out a perspective that someone agrees with, terrific. But for every perspective that you put out there that someone agrees with, you're going to have someone else that, that's not going to agree with you. And that person who doesn't agree with you, depending on how they feel or how passionate they are about that perspective, may not do business with you. That's, I'll tell you from the perspective of a newspaper publisher, obviously we try to print both sides of issues or, or both points of view, even on different issues. And we always get uh, complaints from one side of the spectrum or the other. You know, if we print, print a conservative article, the liberals will complain. If we print a liberal article, the conservatives will complain. So there's no winning in this. As a newspaper, you're kind of required to do this. But for a regular business, I think you're right. It's it's better just to stay out of any of these provocative sort of issues, unless it really it has a bearing on your business. Which which maybe is an interesting question: Are there businesses where where provocation works? Where actually you want to seek generating some sort of kind of controversy? If you have an audience that leans uh, politically to a certain way, you know that is your core audience. And I guess that's, you, you, you play it to your audience. And I, the, I, it's kind of strange, but I have no idea what happened to late night television. At one point, they were supposed to be, you know, reaching the ma max amount of people possible. And now they're only targeting people with a certain political perspective. So I feel like I don't understand why that's happening. But uh, if you are in a business and you have an audience that leans heavily one way or another, and you know that your core business, your bread and butter, is for people that think a certain way on a political or social issue, then it makes logical sense to engage with them in that particular way. But understand this, that when you go political, when you go uh, heavily into social issues, you're always going to limit the full capacity of the amount of people that you can reach out to. And the clients that we have, they have political perspectives. They have certain perspectives that uh, 
could promote individuals, but at the same time, we always advise them that what's most important is that your expertise, it is your expertise that you're providing that is most important because your expertise and the value that you can provide on a, on a matter far is far more valuable and far exceeds any political or social perspective you can be presenting. Now let's talk about what happens when you don't do something on purpose, when you make an honest mistake and it cause a, uh, causes a bit of a to-do, let's say, uh, and, and it puts your business yeah. at risk. How do you go about managing the crisis once it's happened? Okay, well, the first thing you should do in this situation is you wanna hire a crisis communications firm. I happen to know a, uh, an exceptional crisis communications firm because crisis communications is something that we live in. We live, we live in it every day. You're always seeing things happening. But if you find yourself in a situation like that, the first thing you need to do is hire a professional because they'll be able to gauge the temperature of how people are responding. There are certain types of situations where a crisis will get worse based on how people are discussing it on social media. That's how we can kind of tell when certain when companies have made a profound mistake. If, if you have a, a, you know, a scandal, that is gaining more followers and people are tweeting about it, and then you lead to protests, then you, you know the situation is getting really bad. Some of these things, they go away relatively quickly because we live in a world where we're bombarded with news 24 seven. And for every scandal out there, there's another scandal around the corner that's gonna make it progressively worse. So for a small business owner, I would say that unless you're putting something out that is inherently racist or you're putting something out there that um, is so uh, despicable that gauges the national attention, you should be okay. But the best thing that you can do is to not uh, poke the bear and to stay off social media as often as possible and only put your perspectives about your business out there. But if you do find yourself in a crisis, you should hire a firm. And if you don't even hire a firm, you wanna stay calm, but you don't wanna let uh, false allegations against you go unanswered. So if people are saying falsified allegations against you and you're being quiet about it and you know that they're false, you're not responding, that is you're putting yourself in a very bad position. So when companies come to us, individuals come to us, we come up with responses based on what people are being, what's being said. You don't wanna to put too much information out there. You also don't wanna to put too little information out. It's a very delicate line. Some people, when they're attacked, they respond emotionally and sometimes the emotional response actually triggers a much worse response and makes the uh, situation even worse. Let's talk, I mean, you, you kind of got into this and I, I'm thinking this might be practical to a lot of people out there. When there is a mistake that someone makes, uh, a lot of times it's not a national mistake. In other words, the whole country doesn't know about it. It's just their small community. So give us sort of like a few hints of how they can handle a, a, a small community crisis that you know, that could impact their, their organization? Well, if you have done something and it, it is something you're not proud of, one of the best things you could do is, is put out a statement, you know, offering to, to say, you know, uh, apologizing for it, saying you're taking action to, to rectify the situation. I mean, most people have logical mind will, will forgive you. And the best thing about time is that time has a tendency to heal. And in, even in a small time atmosphere, there's so much distractions that are going on that unless you did something historically awful, a time will heal it. And people probably, it'll probably be forgotten because most people uh, kind of, I think I was talking to a couple of uh, psychologists about this, but most people are thinking about themselves. And unless it pertains directly to themselves, it may, it may not be the situation. But if you do a mistake, and you have a crisis in it and it's a small town atmosphere, I would say, you know, put out an apology, put out a statement and put out a, a cause of action, letting people know that this is what I'm going to do to make the situation better. And unless it is, it is catastrophic, most of the time the situations will heal by themselves just because of the fact that we are in a 24 seven news cycle. I don't think the same would be, would be occurring 10 or 20 years ago. All right, we got about 15 seconds left and I, don't, I want to end on, a, on an uplifting note. So give us something that uh, someone can do right now that will give them a win in terms of public relations. The best thing you can do right now is to know and tell yourself that you deserve to be seen and heard by millions of people. And if you want to get to that point, 
You can reach out to a number of different PR firms, but we highly recommend giving us a call, goldenmccormick.com, and know that you deserve to, to put your information out there because if you're providing value to people, you deserve to be out there. All right. Thanks, Ryan. And if you want to be a member of the live audience where you can ask our guests questions live, it's the only way to ask questions, then go to stateof.greaterwesternnewyork.com and you can register there. It's free. And every Thursday morning, you'll get the link to the site where you can come into the studio and be prepared to ask questions. So, Ryan, I want to thank you for uh, being here. Thank audience. You. I want to thank you for listening. Remember, if you can't watch us live, it's the, the shows are archived on our site, stateof.greaterwesternnewyork.com, or every Sunday at 1.30 on Facebook. Like our page there. It's rebroadcast. It'll notify you when it's rebroadcast. If you prefer YouTube, subscribe to our channel there. Same thing, 1.30 on Sunday. It's re-aired, and it'll notify when it is broadcast. So that's it for this week's folks we'll see you all again next week bye bye for now